Good morning, boys. Today I am going to explain you how to perform the experiment based on a glass prism. So we are taking the aim of the experiment as to study the relationship between the angle of deviation and angle of incidence in a glass prism. And by changing the values of angle of incidence, we'll try to find out how the angle of deviation changes, right? The formula used is going to be same as we did for a glass lab. So you can write out there the formula as refractive index of glass with reference to air is equal to sin i over sin i. The observation table what you're going to take here is with different values of angle of incidence. I'm starting with 35 degree. That means 35 degree, 40, 45, 50 and 55 degree, 5 or you can take 60 degree also. 5 to 6 readings you are going to take and each reading has to be performed on a separate sheet of paper. Please remember, right? Each sheet is going to be separate. That means each angle will be drawn on a separate sheet of paper while performing your glass prism experiment. Now, what exactly we are going to do there? We'll take a plain sheet of paper and then we'll draw the outline of the glass prism as I've drawn shown on the board here. Indicating A, B, C, that means the triangular portion of the prism we are going to draw on your plain sheet of paper. And then draw a ray here as incident ray making an angle of 35 degree with the normal for the first reading for the second reading you will change this angle to 40 degree and so on right so i'm explaining you the first reading incident ray you're doing on the glass prism and show the point of incidence here clearly and the normal has to be indicated shown in a proper manner right on this incident ray right you are going to put one pin the second pin and the third pin that means you are going to fix on your board like this the pin the second pin and the third pin whatever the structure you are drawn the glass prism you are drawn the on the incident ray you will be putting three all pins vertically erect right and now you will observe the image of these three pins from the other side of the prism, right? Even if you have to bend a little bit, you can do that. So, we'll try to fix other three pins. Let's suppose this one pin I'm fixing here. This is a, another pin I'm fixing. There's a second pin I'm fixing here. Keeping in view that those three pins, the image, and the pins which I'm fixing, they appear to me in a straight line. So, I might have to bend a little bit. So, I'll be putting these three pins. Now, once you have done this much of work, you will remove the pin and then encircle the point with a pencil. Remove the second pin and encircle it with a pencil. Remove the third pin and encircle it with a pencil. Same thing you are going to do with the pins what you have fixed here on the incident ray. So that you know which were the exact points drawn and where did you fix these three pins correctly because sometimes you might have to change the positions of the pin so to identify the correct position of the pin will be encircling those points now once i have done this i join these three points with a ruler and make it into a straight line that means you find if your diagram is drawn correctly or you have performed the experiment correctly these three points are going to appear in a straight line once you have done this now later work, what exactly we are going to do? I'll draw normal here at the point of incidence and mark this as angle of emergence. The point of incidence here and the point of incidence here, I'll be joining and I'll find out the angle of reflection here. This is a normal and this is a reflected ray. And if you see carefully, the refracted ray is bending towards the base of the prism, right? That has been taught to you in your theory paper also. 
Now this is going to be your outline structure of your first observation. Later on you will find the value of angle of refraction, you will be putting it in the observation table, you will find the value of angle of emergence, you will find it in, write it in the observation table. One more value you need, you extend this emergent ray further and you extend the incident ray further forward. Whatever is going to be the angle between the two extended rays. Now this is going to be angle of deviation, right? That means I'll repeat it. Emergent ray extended backward and the incident ray extended forward. So as to know what is the deviation of the ray, how much the incident ray got deviated while it is coming out of the prism. So this angle of deviation, I'll measure it with the protector and I'll write the value in the observation table. Now once all the five or six readings I have performed, then I have to plot a graph between angle of deviation and angle of incidence. Those values, whatever you get, you plot the graph. Angle D has to be on the y-axis and angle of incidence has to be in the x-axis. Now once I perform and mark all the points, let's suppose my points appear like this, right? Now six points are marked and my points are appearing like this, so I'll encircle these points and I'll join these points and you'll find that my graph appears as a parabola. That means the graph structure is appearing as a parabola. It's just like you, right? What exactly are you going to draw a conclusion? How you'll be drawing the conclusion? In the result, you can easily write graph is a parabola. That means the graph between angle of deviation and angle of incidence in a glass prism is a parabola. This is a parabola structure. While drawing the conclusion, you can easily say how the variation is taking place. Meaning, as we increase the angle of incidence, the value of angle of incidence increases, the value of angle of D keeping on decreasing. It reaches the minimum value and here I can mark it on my graph angle of minimum deviation. Beyond this angle of minimum deviation, if I further increase the value of angle of incidence, I am finding that as I am increasing the angle of incidence, the angle of deviation also is keeping on increasing. I am repeating it. For lower values of angle of incidence, as I increase angle of incidence, the angle of deviation keeps on decreasing till it reaches to a minimum value. Beyond this minimum value of angle of deviation, if I further increase the angle of incidence, I find as the angle of incidence increases, the angle of deviation also keeps on increasing. You have to be very careful while performing the light experiments because it might create too much of error. So observe the points very, very clearly, right? And while doing your experiment, focus and concentrate on your work, right? Now let's see how we are going to actually perform it in the practical time. Now this is the glass prism I have taken the outline of. And so on this sheet of paper, you will be using this prism and the triangular portion, you are going to draw the outline on the sheet of paper and then draw the angle of incidence by making use of an incident ray which has been shown drawn on this sheet of paper. Now this paper, you are going to fix it on the hard board, use the thumb pins and fix it from all the four sides so that it doesn't move. Now you will put this prism back at its place where the outline you have drawn and use the pins and put three pins on incident ray, right? Whatever you have drawn, you will be putting three pins on the incident ray. Make sure that the distance between each pin is more or less around two centimeter, right? Minimum two centimeter distance should be there and now you will try to observe it from the other side. 
and try to put other three pins by seeing the image of the previous three pins what you have drawn and then you will keep on putting the pins so that all the pins what you are fixing they appear to you in a straight line. So I have I'm putting these pins like this and I'm finding I'm seeing it through the prism also and I find that these pins are appearing to me in a straight line. Now I'll remove this pin and I'll encircle the point with a pencil. I'll remove this second pin and I'll be encircling the point with a pencil. The third pin also same way you're going to repeat. Remove your prism and then these three pins what you have used on the incident ray you are going to remove the pins and as encircle the points. Now once you get this you will remove the paper and then this completion of work you can do later on. These three pins what have been fixed here now we are going to join these marks three points by making use of a ruler. So I will be joining them now once I join them I will find that my reading appears like this. Then I have to do extra work for measuring the angles. So I will draw a normal here. This is angle of incidence is already shown. I will measure the angle of refraction by joining these two point of incidence. That means I will be joining the incident ray where the point was there with the emergent ray from where the emergent ray is starting. The point where the emergent ray is starting. So I have joined these two points. Draw the normal and find the value of angle of emergence, right? Now, after completing, your structure will become like this. That means this is the incident ray, this is the refracted ray, this is the emergent ray. The incident ray I have extended forward and the emergent ray I have extended backward. The angle between the two you can see easily I have marked it as angle of deviation whose value you will be reading it out from this observation and you will be putting it in the observation table, right? For the next observation, you will change the angle of incidence and repeat your experiment. So, for each value of angle of incidence, you will find that the angle of refraction, angle of emergence and angle of deviation will be changing. And by making use of these values, at the end, you are going to plot the graph between angle of deviation and angle of incidence. Right? I hope it is clear to you now and you can perform your experiment. Okay? Thank you boys.